Gonna Go Pizza presents SCP. Check this. The Steve Dangle Podcast with your hosts, Steve Dangle and Adam Wise. Wow. 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 Let's... I mean, there's so many things that we could we could cover. There's there's the um, Freddie Gauthier. Yeah, there's Freddie Gauthier being called up. There's the Toronto Bunch Maple Leafs other ones. winning last night. There's the huge three way trade. But I think the thing we need to lead with is the insane story about how Steve Dangle tried to abandon his dog by the side of the road and was unsuccessful in that attempt. Unfortunately, he came back. So um, now you're stuck again with two. As much as you've always wanted one dog, not two, and Mrs. Dangle won, and you tried to sabotage her. It didn't happen for you. And I figured no one would expect me to intentionally get rid of the first one. Right. Thwart it again. I wouldn't have got away with it, too, if it wasn't for you meddling kids. Did meddling. you try and delete a dog? I did. Matt Hardy, delete. Um, it didn't work. No, <laughs> no, so that was very concerning. So yesterday I was on a roll. Got up nice and early. Started an article. Finished an article. That should be up today, I hope. It's on Patrick Marlowe and why he's amazing. It was uh, from a discussion that we had on this very show. Uh, then I made a video for TV, started it, ended it, done, answered a bunch of emails, texted Adam. Adam goes, we have a call in five minutes. I go, what? Cool. We do the call. And then I hear a whine at the back door. I go, oh, it's Charlie. That's right. He's been outside for like an hour just pl- <laughs> playing with his brother Iggy. Oh, I'll let them in. Where's Charlie? Oh, here's Charlie. Where, where's Iggy? Well, he's not in our backyard. Let me look into our neighbor's backyard. Right, oh my God, their door's open! Because man made hole in the fence, Steve. And uh, I mean, to, to to give some background on this, to be fair to Steve, the dogs at the neighbors and Iggy were dig under the fence and get into each other's yards anyway. So they decide, in their infinite wisdom, um, yeah, your your poppy's gonna poke you there. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> So I'm just gonna, you know what? It belongs on a jacket. I'm yeah, sorry. mine's on my jacket. Um, the uh, so <laughs> so I guess you, you you removed some boards from the fence. Yeah, three panels, so yeah. they can play in both yards, which I think is super cool. Yeah, me too. Until your neighbors Dick. leave their door open. Well, I don't. I think it might be broken or something because it's blown open more than once. And there was one time Iggy got out, and it was my fault. And our back door was open but luckily he just went to the front lawn there was another time where he was smeared in poo and uh, yeah well (laughs) my wife and i are both home and then bing bong oh i wonder who that could be at the door oh weird our dogs aren't freaking out that someone rang the doorbell and by dogs i mean just dog because we didn't have charlie yet and there's iggy at the front door with our neighbor going your dog got out and covered in poo yeah somehow so what happened was i see the door is open And I just start freaking out, throw on my shoes, start screaming Iggy's name all all around the neighborhood, run around the street to my neighbor's house, because like our houses aren't on the same street. It's just their backyard happens to back onto our backyard. And then so I'm starting to come to terms with, okay, the dog is gone. Iggy's gone. I have to find him. I love that he's a flight risk, by the way. I'm surprised he didn't just come back home. Yeah. Dick. Well, Charlie <laughs> did, and our neighbor was like, oh, well, they get out all the time, and when that happens, they just go right to the front door. You know, like Jehovah's. Mm-hmm. Like, just, no worries. Excuse no me, worries. sir, have you found Jesus? Yes. And have you found my treats? <laughs> have you found my dog? Uh, what would have been a great question to ask. But um, as I'm about to run back to my house and get in the car, I get a call from my father-in-law, and I just go, "That now's, now's not the time I'm dealing with a crisis. He goes, you lost your dog? I go, What? <laughs> He goes, I, I'm an emergency contact for some reason. He's at the pound. <laughs> oh, they picked wow. him up. So he was missing long enough that someone saw him, was like, that's a lost dog, Googled Animal Services Oshawa, called Animal Services Oshawa, and Animal a guy Services in a, Oshawa shows up. A guy in a cape and a big bowler comes with a big net yeah. and <laughs> captures him. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you now, Iggy. And, and then now you're glue. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Wow. Oh, my that's God. Works. I don't it's think that's... Nuts. I don't, it's not. It's dog glue. Nuts. No, he's hot no. dogs, obviously. Oh, oh my God. God. Oh. That <laughs> boy, they hot dog. dog. Yeah. Oh, my yeah, God. That's why we don't have a stray dog problem here in oh. Canada, because... Wow. I mean, we sell so many hot dogs at the Jinx Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Big dog killing farm <laughs> Snyder's. That's why. That's why. Oh my god! But first, they would have used his skin as a new coat. 
<laughs> Sheerling, okay, I believe Cruella it's called. Okay, Cruella DeVille is not Canadian. <laughs> She's British. Is Glenn Close? Glenn Close is American. Uh, well, there you go. Yes. Anyway, well, we had a Glenn Close one. Yes. Had to go down to uh, <laughs> the pound and... <laughs> Long story short, microchip your dog if you haven't, because Iggy it's, was not wearing a collar, and the only reason we were able to find him is because he was microchipped. Yeah, that was one of the uh, recommendations they made. Well, I, I think I don't even think it was a recommendation. It was a you must do this because rescue dogs uh, like ours uh, and I'm and like Charlie, I'm sure are for some reason they it can be take the littlest thing to spook them, and then they're yeah. gone. And it yeah. doesn't matter that they've been at that home for five years and they've never run away, and they always come when you call. Could just one little thing and. Gone. We found out recently Charlie's like one of his number one fears, the smell of lamb meat. Lamb meat? Like uncooked lamb meat. Really? If anyone can explain that one to me, I'm all ears. It's a fear? Yeah, like tail between the legs, be hides underneath the kitchen table. The, the terrified search shape. Maybe he's been to the hot dog factory. I don't know. <laughs> no, no. Because they also no. kill lamb. Yeah, they, right? No, ah, it's golden that, doodles and lambs. It's basically the same, yeah. you know, uh, fur, right? They do look the same. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it's, you know what? You so, guys are awful, awful men. <laughs> it's not our fault that Schneider's is killing dogs. It's your fault that you're a Whoa. terrible person, though. Allegedly, Jesse. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Allegedly <laughs> With murdering apologies. millions of dogs all, every year. In all seriousness, Schneider's, we're just kidding. It's a joke. The we're Schneider's kidding. I enjoy your dogs. tasty products. In fact, that's what I buy. That surely contain no percent of dog. <laughs> no. So, percent of your dog. No, because I <laughs> saved my dog exactly. from the pound, and he was so happy to see me when I saw him. Just kidding. All he wanted to do was explore the rest of the pound and chase <laughs> after <Aww>. a cat. <laughs> because if you've ever been to a shelter, they like have cats that just yeah. chill on the desks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, and there's he so many. Chase them. There are so many butts to sniff there. Like That is an exciting spot. All the butts. There's so many butts. But what seemed great about the whole thing is... Had Charlie not whined at the back door, how much longer would I have left that situation? I mean, I guess Iggy would have been safe. But all but, the same. And then, like, he seemed so concerned. And then when I brought, like, Charlie freaks out every time I come home. Like, he's five times what Iggy is when I come home. And all he was doing was sniffing Iggy when he came back. So I feel like Missed he him. knew he was lost. I, it's interesting that of the two dogs, the one that you raised from puppy is the one that left. Yeah, again... That's very no, interesting. Charlie's easy. Charlie's a carpet. Like what? all this, all this, all these nightmare stories you hear about, you know, rescue dogs and baggage and whatnot. None of that with Charlie. Mm -hmm. None of that, except for the lamb. Which but is also, weird. why is there a hole in your fence? Why? Because <laughs> they were digging underneath it. It, it was going to be one way, or it was going to be the other, right? Well, first fill of all, in. yeah. It no, no. Oh yeah, just fill it in. Thanks, person without a dog. <laughs> oh, yeah, just fill it in. They'll dig it back up. Fill Trust it in me. and then Put hand the dog a memo not to dig the anymore. Fence. <laughs> the fence is there. The problem is the door was open. What was the no. door being open? There's a hole in between your two backyards. Do you open the hole in your apartment, Jesse, or the door? Steven. It's a door. Steven. Do you leave the hole open all night? It's Steven. more of an archway. I mean, you if we're being can't honest, control whether your neighbor's door is open or not. Correct. Right. So this so is you concerning. can't risk it that oh, I hope they have their door closed every time you let your dogs. Out. I usually so sit... you put something in front of the hole so your no. own dogs stay in your own damn backyard. No. You don't make them the responsibility of your neighbor. It was my you fault. Considerate neighbor. It was my fault. <laughs> Who? First of all, they are very considerate. Second of all. It was my fault for A, leaving them so long, and B, not sitting at the table that I usually do, which I can see clearly into the backyard. So you just sit there and watch your dogs all the time. Yeah, it's great. Hey, start video blogging, everybody. D don't hate. Don't hate. If you want to do it, just start video blogging, everybody. That's what I did. I, I stopped listening once that. And once I got you... my two dogs, and they're not made into any kind of food. And I love them, and they have to wear their collars all the time. Iggy has lost his going outside without a collar privileges permanently in the same way that he lost his back car window open yeah, privileges as he tried when he to jumped escape. out. <laughs> I think he's an idiot. I mean, like, Charlie is, is he an idiot, Charlie's or does he just not want to live in your oppressive home? I mean, I think that's clearly... Um, he tried to escape through the car, now through the fence. I mean, it, it might who be that. The, whose fault is this, really? You, you have you know, no idea, because he can't talk. Maybe when they were handing him back to me... In dog language, he's going, no! 
<laughs> we have no idea. Charlie seems pretty cool with it all. He's like, I don't know, they feed me. There literally could not be a happier dog on the face of Earth. I, I, I agree with you, Steve. I think he's just oblivious and just wants to like explore. Why not, man? What, what I don't like, like is he's on more spirit. than one occasion, my friends, I think maybe even you, have been like, Iggy is just like you, Steve. I don't think he's, I've ever said he's that. He's just a big idiot. <laughs> no. <laughs> no one has ever said that. At least three of my friends you know have said why? that. You know why that's Including inaccurate? my wife. You know why that's inaccurate? Because Iggy can long divide. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> we don't know that. <laughs> All right. He's been to the pound one time divided by one equals I, I'm not sure. Steve? <laughs> I probably. Steve gets his dogs. Ottawa and Nashville get their centers. Oh, my God. That was bad. That was bad. What, the trade was bad? <laughs> no, you're oh, I think that was a good transition. I think Ron McClain would be very that was proud. A I'm going to send Adam it to him. Transition. All right. That was very I, I want to send that to Ron McClain and just see what he thinks. Okay. Okay. Mm. See how we rate on the Ronometer there. Um, what would Ron say for that? We'll figure it out. Um, okay. So <laughs> Ottawa finally gets their man. Well, they get, they get rid of their man. Uh, and that's what's interesting. Kyle Turris was their man. Sorry, I figured it out. And an avalanche of players involved in the deal. We'll find out who ends up on top of the mountain. <laughs> See, that's pretty good. That is pretty good. <laughs> sorry, sorry. You know sorry. what? Uh, there was a lot going on, okay? Jesus. I know, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm being difficult. Um, <laughs> no. Ottawa. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> when Ottawa was talking to Kyle Turris, he wanted $6 million, and they're, they're like, cool. Six times six. Yeah. He. Well, Pierre Dorian said, cool. Well, Pierre Dorian said cool to $6 million. He did not say cool to years seven and eight. Kyle Turris wouldn't budge with the Ottawa Senators on year seven and eight. He said, you, you got to give me seven or eight years. That, well, was, that was the deal. But Nashville didn't. Right. So Pierre Dorian, I'm not sure if you saw this clip, but on SportsCenter this morning, or sorry, Sports, uh, SportsNet this morning. SportsNet Connected. SportsNet Connected uh, this morning. He said, and this is the best, he said, uh, well, that's news to me. I, that's not what we discussed ever. Six years was not what we discussed ever. As in, I don't think this deal gets done if Kyle Turris didn't also want out of town. If hmm. he's making Ottawa come to the plate with se years seven and eight and he didn't do that with Nashville, don't you find that interesting? Maybe it's he believes in Nashville more or maybe... He wants to be there more? It's interesting because this trade leaked and Friedman... The thing, Friedman was on every station in the world talking about this trade. And the one thing he said over and over and over again was the deal was in place. Then it kind of got out. Um, Ottawa set a deadline on the Friday. Friday which is so stupid. I know. Oh, you're going to set a deadline. It's a and negotiation they, tactic. I don't know. They got really one. angry. They took a breath. Eugene Melnick said stuff to the media. Uh, Did you hear that? You hear what they want for Duchesne? Is that what he said? Yeah. And then they got him. And then they paid it. <laughs> it's my favorite. You can't talk yourself out of a bad situation, right? And never let your owner talk. Ever. Ever. I've and never Melnick seen, is the worst. I've never seen Larry Tannenbaum in front of a camera. Just throwing that out there. What does his voice sound like? I, I have no idea. Know. No idea. He's but actually not a person. He's just Whoa. a guy. He's just a guy. That Tannenbaum. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was good. That was good. Uh, I'll accept that. So, so, so it's interesting that tourists... Leaves Ottawa. Now, maybe for years seven and eight, he would have been accepted. He would have been able to accept less per annum. So maybe it's 5.5 over eight years or seven years or whatever. Maybe. And Nashville was just willing to give him more in less time. But six years is still a long time. He, in, anyway, I guess what was interesting about this is Elliot Freeman went on Tim and Sid yesterday and he said that a lot of the times when dead deals leak, and it's rare that they do. It's usually like, well, they, they like the Valtteri Philpola to the Leafs thing sort of yeah. leaked last year. Yeah. But normally when that leaks, the deal's already dead, it's off the table, and it's done. This deal seemed to motivate all parties involved to get the deal done. And I thought that was really interesting because, you know, I'm sure the fans and the players and management that weren't privy to those conversations were probably like, come on, guys, well, get what, this together. What was especially interesting to me, and that was another thing Friedman made sure to uh, really emphasize, was names getting out there. Uh, really forced the trade to giddy up. Well, who's named? Duchesne? No. I mean, he, he's been out there for a very long time. Turris? No. He's been in rumors for months. Well, who else in there is of any consequence? It's just a bunch of prospects in Andrew Hammond. You know what I think So that's it was? what I'm confused about. I think it was Ekholm. Ah, because he was rumored to be in the deal. That's right. So you want to put the fire out 
to satisfy a player who is clearly sticking around. I see. I don't know. Just a thought. Or maybe it was Ottawa pe- people in Ottawa going, oh, we could get Duchesne and Ekholm, or we could get one of both. Get on it. Maybe it was people in Colorado going, come on, can you just solve this, Joe? Like, it, it's gone on for, since last December, this has been a problem. 11 months of Matt Duchesne wanting out of here. Maybe time to pull the trigger. Maybe. Yeah, And maybe all, a bunch of all three. Uh, maybe a little bit of none. Uh, who knows? But it's very, very interesting that Elliot Friedman made that point. Now, um, Duchesne's only got one more year here. Turris has already re-signed. They sat down, I believe, on Sunday morning. The deal was dead as of Saturday night. Sunday morning, Duchesne and his agent, or sorry, not Duchesne, Turris and his agents uh, uh, sit down with Nashville. They hammer out a deal. The trade goes through. Yeah, a couple of people were confused, by the way. It's not like uh, Turris was traded to Nashville, and then immediately they're like, so what do you want, kid? Like, no, they give you permission to have a conversation about a, a, a signing beforehand. That's the catalyst for the trade happening. You've got... Duchesne now in Ottawa, which uh, uh, I, Dorian loves, uh, uh, the coach loves, the team loves. This is great. He seemed like he was super jacked after practice yesterday, um, just watching his you know post game scrum or post practice scrum. Um, they mentioned Boucher had a history with Duchesne. Yeah. I was trying to figure out what that was too. Must be a junior. No, he- couldn't have been uh, because uh, Duchesne was in the OHL with uh, Brampton when Boucher was like coach of the year with uh, Drummondville in the queue. Maybe he's got a history like I've got a history with Matt Duchesne, which is I respect him as a hockey player. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I no, like I the way that been, guy plays. It might have been the World Juniors that year. Because I think Boucher might have been the coach. Okay, that's, that's probably it. So here's the thing. Might have been, I don't know. Matt Duchesne's got a year left after this. He's up in 2019. The infamous Drew Doughty class. Eric Carlson class. Eric, class, Eric Carlson too. Eric Is Carlson. It, was that the breath? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I know, but we know Eric Carlson. Carlson's staying in Ottawa. <laughs> like, I call it the Drew Doughty because we're not sure, although I'm pretty sure he's staying in L.A. too. If Duchesne, you got Duchesne for another year, do you look at getting an extension done this season or next season, or are you in win-now mode, and if you're winning now and then next year, and then, I mean, you don't want him to walk for nothing— but at the same time, maybe you're going into a rebuild after that. Well, as as Frege, um alluded to, if you can't get Carlson signed, who gives a damn about Duchesne or anybody? So Ottawa's priority number one is going to be Carlson. And they can start and that it's gonna be July Duchesne. 1st, right? That negotiation officially? I believe so. I don't know. Because um, I think it's always like a year. It has to be a year before. You can't sign an extension two years out. See, with the UFA, I thought you could. Oh, maybe you can. I don't know. It's just no one does it because why would you? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, maybe it's maybe it is that simple. I mean, you you start with Carlson. Ideally, Ottawa. If I mean, ideally, if you're the Sens, signs him July first. With if you're Eric Carlson, I'm not sure what the what benefit of that is. I mean, you hold all the cards. It's yeah. rare that a player holds all the cards. So how many players in this league hold all the cards? Connor McDavid did. Connor McDavid. Uh, and he, Connor McDavid didn't even play all his cards. No, twelve and a half million to me is not enough. Sidney Crosby, yeah, but in 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 itself, that is playing a, a card. He's going, I okay, I'll take less so that I have a better chance of having talent around right. me. Leon so, Dreisaitl, on the other hand, said, nope, not. I'm playing all my damn cards, yep, and I'm going to get all your money. Because Isn't that interesting that Connor McDavid has to not play the card so Leon Dreisaitl can? I find that interesting. Just throwing mm-hmm. that out there. Because Leon Dreisaitl sure didn't back off his number. I'm sure Connor, Connor nope. did, though. Nope. I mean, even if Dreisaitl plays extremely well, that's... He's, it's going to take it's a lot so, to convince me that's a good deal. No. That's way too much money. Um, you got to pay something to get some. You got to pay <laughs> something <laughs> to get some. <laughs> so, no, I'm going to adjust my belt buckle Put to that. Put a feather in my cap. <laughs> <laughs> Shine on <Shine>. Monaco. <laughs> Uh, oh, that was so great on Reddit. Uh, I, I actually looked up today because I didn't know the answer to this. The one thing nobody talked about is why did Duchesne want out in the first place? And we finally got that... Some light shed on that. No one was asking. I was like, why, does, why do we not know why he, what does he yeah. want out so bad for? And it's because he didn't want to go through a retail stage in, mm-hmm. in Colorado. And Kiprios had a great little rant uh, before the Leafs game. What or it say? might have been during the Leafs game. He's like, uh, you thought you didn't like the rebuild in Colorado? Just wait until the potential rebuild in Ottawa. And it's true. Like, it's or Ottawa, he doesn't resign there and it doesn't matter. 
Yeah, maybe it just goes to free agency. It doesn't matter. I mean, that'd be pretty funny after all this. But uh, Not for Ottawa fans. <laughs> I mean, Ottawa could have a really good season this year. Mm-hmm. And then if all parties get re-signed, they can continue to be, you know, playoff-ish team and, you know, a conference final-ish team. Um, but the second you lose Carlson, or even Duchesne for that matter, because then there will be a giant gap at center, they're screwed. They're <laughs> They're hurting. They're, they're in a lot of trouble. And looking at the haul Colorado got, first of all, I owe a, an enormous apology to Joe Sackick. <laughs> what a haul. Are you sure? What a, oh, yes. Okay. Oh, now, yeah, I'm to impressed. Me, to me, the the big piece on that one is Samuel Girard. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll get through all that. But um, um, the second bit is how, how long is Colorado's rebuild really going to take? Because Je- as Jeff Merrick pointed out on Twitter, this brings Colorado one step closer to Rasmus Dahlin. Can you imagine? Can I, you effing imagine? I, yeah. Um, so frustrating. Before we talk about like each individual haul, can I talk about every team's in and out? Sure. Because that's what I tried to figure out this sure. morning. I have one question about Duchesne, yes. though. Uh, are we sure that he's the number one center? No. Mm. I think he's been... In fact, I don't even think he was the number one center in Colorado. I think Nate McKinnon was. Is. I, yeah, I would say a really good 1A. And I think Turris... Kind of like Turris. Turris. Turris is a bit of a 1A. Yeah, he's like, the 1A. Uh, and, and I don't think him being your number one is a good situation. What's the, but you want him on your team. What's the lineup card site you always go to? Uh, oh, Daily Faceoff. Daily Faceoff. DailyFaceoff.com. Now, I don't know if they'll have Turris in there yet or Duchesne in there yet. Ironically, isn't Duchesne's first game against... Um, Colorado in Sweden. In Sweden, yeah, that's insane. Is, yeah, that's a, the, that'll be sort a nice that long plane ride Colorado across the Atlantic. <laughs> hey, get to know your teammates. What do you think the guys are going to talk about? I don't know. <laughs> well, <laughs> Maybe a new guy in the room. Well, uh, Ottawa's going to be talking about. Wow, that was a pretty crazy twenty four hours. Maybe they're mad that they're losing Kyle, but they got Matt. So Colorado's Dar- going to be like, crap, <laughs> they're selling. <laughs> So, from what it looks like from Daily Faceoff, and again, they haven't played a game yet, so we don't know this for sure, but it looks like he's the number two guy anyway. Is it weird that I see 19 in a Sens jersey and still think Spezza? Oh, really? Up I top. still think Yashin. Is he, wasn't oh, he 19? Wow. Um, yeah, because it's Zingle, uh, Broussard, Stone, and then Zach Smith, Duchesne, and Mike Hoffman in the top six. Um, I don't think that about yeah, well, who knows? Who knows? Right. I I know that uh, they want to play him with some speed, so we'll see how that goes. But you know, Mike Hoffman's not a bad line mate to have. Um, oh my god! It's so it, it's just it. So what's each, each team's out? Let's get to that. Okay, each team's out. You said that's what you're in and out. Okay. Well, I have their in and out. Okay, Go. we'll do that. Oh, okay. Sorry, I thought you just wanted their out. Oh my goodness. Okay, Ottawa in Matt Duchesne out. Shane Bowers, Andrew Hammond, 2018 first. 2019 third. So four things out. I believe a future, or sorry, past first rounder. Future first rounder. Um, Andrew Hammond, I mean, that's a cap dump. Mm -hmm. Uh, A first and a third. Yep. Into Nashville, Kyle Turris. Out. Samuel Girard, who was actually in their lineup, left-handed defenseman, had three points in five games. Vladislav Kamenev. I think he might have been a former first rounder. He was a highly touted prospect. He was doing pretty good in the AHL. And a 2018 second. Into Colorado. Shane Bowers, Samuel Gerard, Andrew Hammond, Vladislav Kamenev, 2018 first from Ottawa, 2018 second from Nashville, 2019 third from Ottawa. Out, Matt Duchesne. That's pretty good. That's insanity. And supposedly they were going to try to flip Andrew Hammond. So basically what they got was three pretty nice prospects, mm-hmm. three picks, one of which is a first rounder, and whatever low pick you get for Andrew Hammond. Probably trading him to Vegas. They're saying that Gerard will be the guy that um, he'll be a top four offensive defenseman. Uh, I haven't ba- had much time to Shane do Bowers research was, on these guys. was just drafted this year. Uh, quick centerman. Uh, he's 18 years old, though, so it's hard to know exactly where he's going to be. So Kamenev, Bowers and Gerard are both defensemen. Yeah, uh, no, ba- Bowers is a centerman. Oh, okay, gotcha. Uh, Sorry. Kamenev is he was a real star in the I think it was the U18 a couple years ago, or just or just the World Juniors. Um, he projects to be like a middle six center, so a two three guy, still not bad. Who can? And use then that? Um, and then of course Hammond, and then you got your first, second, third. So it's all now. It's up to Colorado scouting staff to make those picks count. Colorado got seven. Well, exactly. So they don't. You don't win a trade 
like that if you're Colorado. The day it happens, you win it down the line. Yeah. Those guys all have to pan out. You have to draft good players. Granted, but how many teams get seven assets for one guy ever these days? And how many three-way deals are ever made? Mm -hmm. Like, Joe Sackick played the waiting game, and it worked. It freaking worked. It's like I got to take my hat off to him. Oh, yeah, exactly. Same thing. Just does the same thing. Uh, Just uh, keep uh, waiting. Yeah, a little, little... Same thing, though, right? Like, exactly. He waited. Different scenario, but he waited. Um, so, everyone's talking about how great this deal is. Is it great for everybody? I think it, each, if you look at assets in, assets out, probably not. But if you look at the needs of each team and what the mindset of each team, I think, is more important than the needs of each team. Um, I mean, I, I, Ottawa very clearly has this this two year window, and then you've got, uh, and then you got to resign some players. Uh, you got to figure out your goaltending situation because Craig Anderson is going to get up there. He's like he's you know as as well as he's playing, he's an, he's not a young man no. uh, by NHL standards. And then you've got. He had two years of Duchesne. I think uh, Burroughs is up at the end of the two years. I think Stone and Hoffman all have to be re-signed. Eric Carlson has to be re-signed. Um, Phaneuf will be there less forever. and less worth it every year. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah. Although he's looked all right. And they, I know that they have some good young players coming up. Um, but I still think, I don't, what I, what I, I don't know this for sure. But does Ottawa <laughs> have elite young talent? They might have good young talent. Do they have elite young talent? Well, they have less now. Definitely have less. I, well, I, they got Shabbat. Yeah, Shabbat's going to be a great player, I think. And then who was the other CC's guy? CC's only 23. Yeah, but fans are pretty sour on him. But why? yeah, he could still develop. Yeah, mm-hmm. why? So. I don't, he's not quite what he was touted as. Mm. But I mean, you're right. He's 23. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's 23. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I think that they're really going to go for these two guys or this these two years and try to defense their way into the Stanley Cup. Like, okay, so Colorado gets exactly what they want. Mm-hmm. Stuff. A variety of stuff for Duchesne. Fine. Great. Nashville gets what they want. They get a center to play behind uh, Ryan Johansson. I mean, all of a sudden, you know, you're talking about a team that had horrible center, center depth in the playoffs. 18 months ago had bad center depth, period. That, right, right, right. And now they got Johansson and Turris. I mean, that's a pretty good right-handed one-two punch up the middle. Mm-hmm. Um, and they gave up Gerard, Kamenov, and a second to do it. Steep price. Mm-hmm. But they did it. Ottawa gives up Bowers, Hammond, a first and a third for an upgrade on Turris. For possibly four months. Or well, not four months. 14 months. <laughs> I mean, because mm-hmm. Duchesne, oh, sorry. Duchesne will be, uh, he's got a this year and next left. Oh, you he's said he was tw- the U.S. No, okay. I said 2019. Okay. 2019. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he, I think he's UFA at the same time as Carlson. That's yeah. the big concern. Um, I'm not saying Ottawa lost, but, you know, because they, they did get a couple things that they wanted. They were able to dump Hammond. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> I, d- I don't think they did quite as well as Nashville. Because Ottawa upgraded slightly at a position, whereas Nashville just... Magically, their center position, they inherited a new guy. Can we talk about their top four centers for a second here? Let's go. They were thin at center just a couple years ago. Then you've got Johansson, Turris, Sissons, and Yarncroc. That's that's pretty good. Not bad. It looks a lot better, doesn't it? Yeah. And, of course, you've got Frederick Goudreau, Goudreau as Freddie well. Goudreau. But somebody's going to have to take a seat. We saw so, him score a playoff goal. We sure did. Sure yeah, did. Yeah, so did. yeah, I know it's it's kind of one of those things that uh, it it will be very very interesting to see how this plays out. Ottawa did give up a lot. Give up a lot. Um, let's talk about the Leafs in Vegas mm-hmm. because we actually have special guests coming on in about fifteen minutes here. Yeah, and I will say before we move on, I think Duchesne is Boucher's dream. So we'll see what do? Ottawa does there. Oh yeah, why? Hard working, fast player, um, probably willing to do anything now that he's out of Colorado. So hey. You want me to do the one three one? I will be the one three one kid. <laughs> he'll be the one. He'll be the he'll be the one. Right. I'm, I'm pretty sure he would have be. that. Anyway, sorry. So yes. Leafs beat Vegas last night. Still gave up a three to one lead though. <sighs> I was so frustrated all game long. Heading into overtime, the Leafs had twenty three shots. Right. Vegas also had twenty three. They were outshot five two in the overtime. So that was bad. 
Vegas had a third, sorry, a fourth string goalie in net who looked completely and utterly dejected after the third goal went in. After the first period, the Leafs had 14 shots. Mm-hmm. That's not good enough. Like for this team that has this unstoppable offense on paper, what happened? What the hell happened? Seriously, I, like I'm trying to see the positive. They got a win. They got two points. That's all that really matters. They just needed to get out of this little slide. Um, their schedule over the next two weeks is much nicer than uh, the Western Road Trip. Although we were looking at it, and, and what are they averaging? Four games a week, Jesse? Yeah, it didn't look too great. Yeah, but they they have a bunch of home games. They they have three straight home games. Then they play back to back, but it's against the same team, so at least that team will be just as tired as they are. Mm-hmm. Then they have four days off. They play the Devils at home. Uh, I can't remember. There's a few games in between, and then at some point they play Arizona at home. Rested. Yeah. You know, so like it, it, they're still playing a lot of games, but it's way nicer. Things are slowing down for them a little bit. But you go. And they'll get some practice in as well. But you go the 16th, 18th, 20th, 22nd, 24th, 25th, 28th. And on the 28th, you start the Western Road Trip. Yeah. So I don't think it so, eases up at all. I, all right. Well, then. <laughs> the Leafs get prorated three points for every win. <laughs> like, that's no, that's how the league works, man. Yeah, I'm just saying it doesn't get easier from mm-hmm. here. Here's what Mike Babcock I had think, to say. With all the home dates, I think so. But. Okay, okay. Mike Bab- Babcock said, anytime you've been struggling, you get in your own way a bit mentally, especially when you haven't been on a good team for a lot of years and you're not used to winning all the time. You wonder what's going on. I knew we were going to win a game, you just don't know when. Uh, sometimes you need to go through some of these things so you can get better, and yet you never want to be in it uh, when it's going bad. And he also said, some, he said normally when you're on a cold streak and you're trying to come out of the cold streak, the first win you get is ugly. So hopefully this is the first ugly win. Yep. Um, and, and, you know, it did look a little bit, especially in the first period, like there was um, – some adjustments through the neutral zone, which has been their we- real weakness, right? It's the transition game. It's getting the puck out past their own blue line and moving it. You know, it was like basically they were scoring a billion goals at the start of the season. The league adjusted to them. And then, you know, they were able to kind of clean that up a little bit and and come back and make this happen. So I wonder, too, you know, you see 18 minutes from Mitch Marner last night. He looked great. Uh, maybe the least best forward. Um, so, you like... Even though Matthews look good despite being sore. That's that's kind of the thing where like I'm like, okay, well, if we gotta get Mitch Marner going again, because even when they were doing well, he he wasn't. Riley, easily the best defender. Looked great. Um, you know, it wasn't all bad. Freddie, the, the third goal was so shit. It was so bad. But Freddie. they wouldn't they don't even get one point without the save he made with a minute left. And then yeah. after he allows that goal, he was huge. Yeah. He was huge in the third, huge in overtime, stopped all three shots in the shootout. He was huge. He knew. I think he knew. He's like, okay, I am going to There's be... no way he should have been down on his knees with no, a shot that far out. church goalie. Like, that was brutal. Like, he, he just... He knew. This game is on me if we lose. Because of that. Do you guys know Freddie Anderson's current save percentage? Uh, I saw it this morning. 890-something, uh, so isn't it? 895. 895. You know... Are you concerned? Yeah, I'm starting to get concerned. Like, over your first couple weeks, three weeks, maybe even month, um, you go, yeah, well, that's going to correct itself. I'm waiting. Mm-hmm. Like, it's 14 games. Yeah, it needs to It needs to start going up. Mm-hmm. It needs to start going up. I'm not... I don't think anyone in the city is asking him to be... What Carey Price used to be. I almost said Carey Price. <laughs> <laughs> Carey Price How last year. I know. Like, uh, I'm asking, like, come on, give me 915 for the love of God. Last year you were 918. Can you give me that? Mm-hmm. Can you give me that? Like, you, I don't need you to be an all star. I don't need you to be a Vezna nominee, even. I think, I, th- I mean, I don't think that's unfair. But I also, again, the, the, the atrocious, stuff atrocious, atrocious stuff that the Leafs are doing in their own zone that's leading to these opportunities is just as bad. And I, Absolutely. I can't... Well, even the Anglin goal. Oh. Like, that was a shit line change. He had a wide open shot. And, and you how many stop it, but... How, how, how long before the players finally understand what too many men on the ice looks like? How many... I don't know if there's another team in the NHL that takes more too many men on the ice penalties. So I learned something last night. So the Leafs are tied for, I want to say, third in bench minors since the beginning of last season. They have, I think it was 14. St. Louis is way out in front. They have 18. Here's something I learned. Um, There's more than one bench miner. 
It's not just too many men. Uh, now, what else is a bench miner? Maybe the coach abuses coach, the official. Yeah, it's unsportsmanlike? Yeah, something like that. You know what apparently is counted as a bench miner? Face-off violations. What? That I know. I know. You know how the coach tells the guy... Cheat on this face-off. Cheat on this face-off and lose on purpose. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. I guess because the violation technically happened not during play, it has to be a bench this, miner? As soon as the puck leaves the ref hand. list of... Uh, Bench miners? Yes. List of bench minor penalties. Abuse of officials, delay of game, deliberate illegal substitution, face-off violation, illegal substitution, improper starting lineup, interference from players or penalty bench, interference with official, leaving bench at end of period, refusing to start play, stepping on ice during period, coach, throwing objects onto ice, too many men on ice, and unsportsmanlike conduct. Delay of game is not a bench minor. No. Delay yes. of game is not a bench. It is no, <laughs> like and also. If you shoot by the, the way, puck out of the, uh, if you shoot the puck out unintentionally, but you still get the penalty, it happened during play. How's no. that a bench miner? Nikita Zaitsev found a way around that last night. There was a play where he just chips it. He pokes it completely on purpose, putting it out of play. It was an accident. But because absolutely not. It was absolutely not. If you. The difference is, I guess, the way your stick is pointed. Because if you shoot it, no, you go to the box. If you chip it out on purpose, which is what he did, which is what the rule is there for, no. No, that's fine. Good for you, Nikita. You get right back out there. <laughs> Stupid! Why won't the sport just let me love it? <laughs> please like my sport. Please. Uh, so, so we're fourth in the please conference. Like my, please like your fans. Is yeah. what it should be. So we're fourth in the conference, I think, like six points out of first place. I know. Second in the division. Yeah. I know. Listen, it's, it's not a, time to panic, right? I know, but it's been <laughs> okay. a two six and zero span and, and rightfully yeah. there's criticisms. I'm not I'm not Steve, I'm not quite so low as you are, I think. I, no, no, no. Um, I just get frustrated. Okay. I'm gonna give I'll, I'm gonna give you a couple examples of what just happened this morning. Here's why I'm not upset. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no guys, Shut I'm up, fine. I saw your tweet. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> I saw your tweet. No, uh, something I'm is... I'm not mad. I, I kept thinking to myself, okay, something has to give with this lineup. For the time being, and watch me jinx it for the next game, for the time being, Babcock seems to have finally shaken off the cobwebs and gone, okay, you know what, I need to play Carrick instead of Polak. For the time being, that seems to be the case. Not that Carrick had a banner game last night, but, I mean, for the love of God, Polak is not an NHL player anymore. Do we agree? Do we agree? Moving on. Now, you ever... Walk down the street and you got a pebble in your shoe. Mm -hmm. You got, you got two things you can do. What do you usually try to do? Take the shoe off. Well, I think some people just try to keep on walking. Really? And well, that's idiotic. Because, Why would you do that? Well, like shake it so that you know, cool, because you don't want to slow do you down. Do You're that? trying to do a thing. Do you do that? Yeah, sometimes. That's I'm, it <laughs> I just try to keep on walking. But then, you know what? You know what can wait? The thing. Well, then <laughs> I get so in, maybe I'm running towards the train, but then at some point. You just got to take off your shoe and just and throw it that rock. Yeah. Right. Have you ever been on TV with an earpiece? Yes. Have you, has it ever like not worked? Yes. Have you ever been in the middle of uh, something? Constantly. You ever take it out? Yep. So I've done that too for, with Leafs TV. So you try to go through it. You're trying to talk while there's some shit going on in your head. And then you know what you got to do? You just got to take it out. Mm -hmm. Similar to your shoe with the rock. I think Dominic Moore is the rock. Hmm. Or the or the broken earbud, and uh, that. Why is, do you say that? Well, because this morning the Leafs called up Freddie Gauthier, and I think it's because it's been obvious since the preseason that Mike Babcock is not feeling this whole Dominic Moore thing. Now is, is not that he's the reason they're playing poorly, but I'm saying that is a thing. Is so Dominic Moore at at, at the the role that he's been? Has he been good? Has he been bad? Has he been okay? Has he been passed? But what's he been? Uh, there's been a few obviously bad nights. There have been a couple other decent ones. Um, he's got three goals, mm -hmm. which I thought was uh, surprising. Matt Martin had a three-assist game. Let's not get to that. That's excited. insane. <laughs> he looked great. He I was mean, one of I, their best forwards. I like him with Bozak and Marner, man. I really do. You, you got to give Marner more. And well, I think, yeah, I think but last I, night was a pretty good example. I mean, but. I know, but it's still like, it's the best Matt Martin's ever looked. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying it's the right move. I'm just saying I like it. I know. And Is I see Matt it. Martin going to win the Rocket Richard Trophy? Yeah. yeah. I think so. Or he's going to win the Thornton, the new <laughs> award that doesn't exist yet for most assists in a season. Or the, the, <laughs> the Gretzky. Thornton. The Gretzky, I think Merrick yeah. wanted to call it. That's the, what they should the, do, the oats. by the way. Uh, yeah, It should be a trophy, That's right? the, Yeah, Wayne Gretzky Why should not? have a trophy named after him. 
And do, sure. do they not have a Mark Messi award for leadership? No. And they don't yeah. have a Wayne Gretzky didn't trophy? We, didn't we talk about renaming the trophies once, like two years yeah, ago? Yeah, they were like, the um, nobody knows who Conn Smythe is, so let's <laughs> rename that. Uh, you idiots. Then look it up. A-hole. It's going to be really interesting. Let's not call it the Stanley Cup anymore because nobody knows who Stanley was. <laughs> Who's this Stanley guy? Who is this guy? Let's call it the Netflix Cup because Netflix is willing to spend so much money to sponsor it. Show me, Adam. Show me. Anyway, can have the show me. The, sh- cup. the oh, show me. Nope. Go- nope. Nope. Doesn't oh, exist. Nope. Oh, no. well, never happened. Not, Steve. Well, uh, no, sure. Also, let me throw this out there. Um, <laughs> okay, so 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 Dominic Morris has been okay, right? Plans, well, okay. okay, so it he looked not so good. Uh, Ken Reed is here, so we shall go no, get just, him just, in a minute. Just, he, he doesn't look so good. Uh, didn't look so good in the preseason. We're like, is Miro Altonen going to make this team? And then opening night, Eric Fair is the guy they chose. Now, after only a couple weeks, they send Eric Fair down. They re-sign Roman Polak. We find out it was some sort of cap finagling. The closer they get to the cap, um, the better it is for cap relief because of LTIR, some kind of nonsense. But either way, the guy they chose to put in the lineup... They didn't have to put Eric Fair in the lineup. They could have just carried his cap in. They put Eric Fair in the opening night lineup. That means something. That is not without weight. Then Moore gets in next game, scores a goal. Guess what? Sitting the very next night. Uh, On the Western road trip, Leafs are losing. Uh, Things aren't going so good. They put Marlowe at center because they're so sick of this whole Dominic Moore thing. And now they finally get home. They play one game that uh, I want to say it was either the too many men call. I think it it was. It was the too many men call. Uh, Babcock blows his lid, like completely goes insane. And then later on in the shot, the camera picks up him talking to Moore. Now, I don't know if it was Moore's fault. Or what was yeah, going on Yeah, I'd like to look at there. that again. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what was going on there, but maybe it was just me reading too much into it. And now they call up Freddie Goche. It's pretty obvious that Babcock would like some kind of change at center. By the way, if you haven't read it yet, read Justin Bourne's piece on Freddie Gauthier is not your punchline. Uh, must read. It's a must read. Also, the fact that that guy has come back to the NHL now. It's incredible. I'm surprised in this, he's playing hockey at all. Like his knee was reconstructed. I guys. can't this believe is it. Crazy. So good for him. Looked good when we saw him. Yeah. He did. Um, and I, I, there was one more thing I wanted to bring up, and I've totally forgot. Oh, by the way, can I just say this? Can we just come out and say this? I don't think the Leafs have enough talent on the back end to call themselves a contender. I don't think. And contender I, for what, though? I think it, a it, for a cup. That's okay. what we're here for. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think, That's... listen, I think they're going to make the playoffs. I, you know, barring some disaster. You know, if Matthews go down for 40 games, then that might be in jeopardy. Shut up. But, um... Okay, I think the Leafs are going to make the playoffs. I don't think they're good enough on the back end. And that might just be time. It might just take two or three years for them to really shore up the back end because it's hard to have strong defense and it takes a while to to you know get those guys ready to go. But I think we have to come to terms with the fact yeah. that defense is just not good enough. Let, and can they manage that yeah. weakness by strong back checking from the forwards? Let Carrick play every game. Yes. Uh, and Borgman is getting better every time I see him. He looks great. So that is encouraging. I, the first few games, I was like, I don't know about this whole Borgman thing. But uh, no, he's looked better and better. He's shown that he's got some offensive flash. So that's nice. Jake. My, like I, I've never seen a player I would so confidently say is good and so confidently say is bad. At the same time, and suppose I haven't really looked into it, but I, I was watching a conversation on Twitter between two analytics guys talking about how Gardner's numbers are down, like way down. Like, so he had a rough start. He's had a rough start. What I've been looking for for the past couple games is what Babcock has been screaming for, which is effort. You want to talk about players who I think are kind of lazy out there? Bozak. I don't want to pick on a guy, but he looks really al- aloof. Out there, and there's no one Hesitant? else. No, aloof. Okay. No one on the ice is more aloof than Jake Gardner. So talented, so smart, and I'm just like, move for the love of God, move. He he drives me nuts. He needs to be better. So the Leafs maybe don't have the talent on the back end. They need their guys who we know are talented to play better as well. Riley gave them that. Riley looked fantastic. Where's Jake's game? Yeah, the Riley Hainsey g- pairing is great. Where's Jake's version of that? We need that. 
We we need that to come out. We need Gardner to have a couple excellent games here. Amazing. Okay, and with When's that, when's Audi's oh, contract up? Twenty nineteen, right. and he is re-signing in L.A. because look at that, they're a Stanley Cup contender again. It's unbelievable. So um, L.A. Yeah. is not Toronto. No, no, no. It's <laughs> no, it's L.A. <laughs> That's a fact. Lower it, taxes and it's sunny and <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah. I kind of like winter. So, so maybe Drew Dowdy. Yo, okay, to anyone well. that's like, yo, winter's better than summer. Come on. No, no, it isn't. No, it's not. <laughs> no. And I love hockey. No. Winter is significantly worse than summer, which is why we love hockey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Because it gives us something to do during the winter. Yeah, this sucks so immeasurably. Let's find a way to make it fun. And then hockey was born. Bingo. There you go. Dowdy's coming here. All right. So we're going to bring on yeah. Ken Reed and Dan, uh, <laughs> Dennis Maru. Dennis Maru. Dan Merrick. <laughs> that his, his that last Jim name just caught Ball. my throat. Ken Rory and Dan Merrick <laughs> to talk about baseball coming up on the Steve Dangle Blobcast. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W Y L D E, and at Jesse Blake. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Brought to you by Panago Pizza. Order at panago.com and stuff your face with deliciousness.